الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Surely all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, the sustainer, and the controller of all that happens in the universe. And we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger, his family, his companions, and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All of us, brothers and sisters, or most of us know of the incident when a man came to the Prophet وسلم, and he said, Mata sa'atu ya Rasulullah. When will the hour come, O Messenger of Allah? When will it be established? And the Prophet والسلام, in answering the man, he did not deal with the the, the, the question that the man asked. So he didn't really answer that question. Because the reality is nobody knows when the hour will, will unfold or not, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But subhanAllah, the Prophet ﷺ did not just say to the man, listen, I don't know. He, at the same time, he guided the man to the more important issue. So he said to the man, Ma'adatta laha. What have you prepared for it? If I were to tell you the day of judgment will be established tomorrow, are you ready? Are you prepared? And the man said to the Prophet ﷺ, The Prophet ﷺ said to the man, Anta ma'aman ahbabt. When the Prophet ﷺ asked the man, what have you prepared for the hour? The man said, O Messenger of Allah, I have not done a lot of prayers and fasting and sadaqah. Now this statement does not mean that the man did not pray five times a day. Or that he didn't fast in Ramadan. What it means is that additional voluntary prayers besides the daily prayers, the, the farad, he did not do a lot of those. Besides the farq fasting of Ramadan, he did not do a lot of voluntary fasting or nafal fast. And likewise with charity, it doesn't mean he didn't pay his zakat. He paid his zakat, but he didn't do a lot of extra voluntary charity besides that. But he said to the Prophet ﷺ, however, I love Allah and His Messenger. And the Prophet ﷺ said to the man, you will be with those whom you love. The companion said they were extremely happy when they heard the statement from the Prophet ﷺ. The statement, you will be with whom you love. Because they knew they loved the Prophet ﷺ and they loved Allah. But to actually hear these words from the mouth of the Prophet ﷺ gave them extreme joy. <coughs> to know that by the will of Allah, they will be with the, the one that they love, the Prophet ﷺ. Now I mentioned this hadith, brothers and sisters, to highlight the, the first part of the hadith really. When the man came asking when the hour will be established. And since no one knows when, when it will be established, that's not really an, a big deal. <laughs> What is more important is whether or not a person is prepared for it. For happen it will. There is no doubt about that. Whether it seems to us as being near or far, it will occur. And when it occurs, the question that each one of us should contemplate now is what have we prepared for it whenever it happens? To a similar degree, brothers and sisters, we need to really think about death, even before we worry about the judgment. Because our death may be much closer to us than the actual qiyamah, the actual judgment. And once we die, our hopes, our chance of doing, 
of making any difference in our outcome is over. Our chance is over, except of course from certain acts, certain things we have initiated while we were alive, which is all, which is all part of the pre preparation for that day when death will come to us. And I'm raising this issue today, brothers and sisters, because yesterday morning at Fajr time, I got a call that one of our dear brothers who were living in Mecca passed away. This is a brother who is probably 55 years old. I don't know his exact age. I've never asked him his exact age. But one of the best people I've come into contact with, a brother who, who had this natural ability to put you at ease and make you feel comfortable from the very moment you meet him. SubhanAllah. You meet him for the first time. And he speaks with you, and within 5-10 minutes, you feel as if you've known this brother for 10 years. And he has held numerous hujjaj. People go for hajj, and mashallah, he invite them home. When I go with the group for hajj, he would say to me, look, you know, bring a group of people. You select whom you want to bring. I can't accommodate everybody, you know, 40-something people at once. But you choose 15, 20 people and let me know, come over, have lunch, have dinner. He would visit us at the hotel room, he would meet the people. MashaAllah. And he has been living in Makkah since 1996. He did studies at the Umul Qura University, MashaAllah, and graduated with a specialty in, in, uh, in being a judge, becoming a judge. And I'm sure this brother had this wish that he would die in Mecca. At the very least, so that his janazah would be performed at the Haram in Mecca, at the Kaaba. SubhanAllah, last Monday, not, not Monday of this week, but the week before, the 29th of October, our group was leaving Mecca to return home from Hajj. And he came to the hotel. And he brought some food for us. Some meat, the sacrificial meat. Because we do the sacrifice with him. He managed to get some of the meat and he cooked it and he brought it to the hotel for us. And we sat down and we talked. On the 31st of October, brothers and sisters, this brother left for Malaysia to do some studies, in, in, to do his masters. So on Wednesday last week he left. He probably arrived in Malaysia on Thursday. And we got a message yesterday morning that he passed away. SubhanAllah. All these years he lived in Mecca. And I'm sure he had that desire and that perhaps expectation that, you know, he would die in Mecca and hopefully be buried there. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had other plans for him. The good thing though, alhamdulillah, I believe, is that Allah took him away from Mecca. However, that journey to Malaysia was still fi sabilillah because he went in pursuit of knowledge. And the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam said, as an Imam Muslim rahimahullah narrates in his sahih, وَمَنْ سَلَكَ طَرِيقًا يَلْتَمِسُ فِيهِ عِلْمًا سَلَكَ اللَّهُ بِهِ طَرِيقًا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ Whoever seeks a path, whoever goes out on a path, <coughs> In acquiring knowledge, seeking to acquire knowledge, Allah will lead him on the path to paradise. So he may have missed the opportunity for his janazah to perform the haram in Mecca. And what greater honor is there for a human being that the last rite that is done for him or her in this world, that his funeral prayer is performed at the Kaaba, no less the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But nevertheless, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him away on that journey for knowledge, which he passed away from. The thing is, brothers and sisters, no one knows when he or she will die. We don't know. The question is, but we know we will die. We don't know when, but we know we will die. We know that it's a, it, it is an inevitable event. And so it is important for us to be prepared. 
to be prepared. Because the question is, if death were to come now, am I prepared? Am I ready? Or are there so many things that I would still like to do in life? And this is a brother, mashallah, when we met with him, he did not exhibit any kind of, of illness or health problems. He did not. And, and you know, he was excited about going to Malaysia, mashallah, and, and continuing his studies there. But when our death comes, there is no delaying that moment. What is important is that we be prepared. We be prepared to the extent where perhaps the last thing we do before we die is something good. So we have husnul khatima. We have a good ending. And this is why many of the scholars in the past used to pray and they would say, Allahumma ij'al khayra a'marina awakhira. Oh Allah, let the, the, the best part of our, our, our lives be the last part. Because what matters is how we die. Not the many things we do before we die. Because the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith in Sahih Muslim, People will be resurrected based on the belief and the things that they were doing at the time or close to the time that they died. So the Salaf used to pray, Allahumma ja'al khayra a'marina awakhiraha. Oh Allah, let the best of our age be the last part of it. Wa khayra a'marina khawatima. And the best of our actions and deeds, the last action and deeds, the khawatim, the seed, the end, the very last things we do before we die. Wa khayra ayyamina yawman alqa. And let the best day of our, our existence be the day we meet with you, O Lord. So, this, this, the, the passing away of this brother, and, you know, this is a person who is close to myself. We go back many, many years. It made me realize that, subhanAllah, we take life for granted sometimes. We go to sleep expecting that we will wake up the next day. And, you know, I, I think about his wife. You know, they, they went to bed that night, mashaAllah. And then, you know, they woke up and that's it, he's dead, he's gone. So, we need not to be complacent about this, brothers and sisters. Death may seem as something far off. We may sometimes think it can't happen to me. But the reality is, it could happen to anyone and it will happen. We just don't know when. So let us strive to be prepared. Let us try to do good things. Let us try to do good things so that whenever death comes, the last thing we've done is something good. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us and help us to be prepared for death, for this inevitable event that will end our one chance, our one shot we have, brothers and sisters, of making a difference in our outcome in the hereafter. Death will end this, this physical existence. And this physical existence is the only chance we have to do whatever we can possibly do to save ourselves from the hellfire. This chance is adequate, mashallah, it's enough, we don't need more time. Sadly, very often, we don't make proper use of this time. That's why Allah tells us in the Qur'an, there are people who will ask for a second chance. They will ask for a short extension. To do what? To do the very things that Allah has asked us to do right now. With all the years that we have of life. So, we should not be complacent. And we should seriously think about death and prepare for it. It doesn't mean we put our lives on hold just to prepare for death. What it means is that we should be more conscious of, of death and more conscious to do more good things every day in our lives. We should be more conscious to avoid things that are prohibited. That's all we need to do. No major changes per se in our lifestyles just to bring it more in sync with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered. 
being more conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being less absorbed and distracted by the dunya, and by the, mashallah, the comforts of life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open up our hearts and minds so that we can understand this message, this wonderful message is revealed for all of mankind and may He inspire all of us and motivate all of us to live by this message and to hold firmly to it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause us to remember death so that we strive to be prepared for it whenever it comes. And may He take our souls while He is pleased with us. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته